Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Great Western Trail Argentina. This is a full teach, no prior knowledge of previous Great Western Trail releases required. This game is designed by Alexander Pfister and published by Eggerspieler. What are we waiting for? Let's get to the game! In Great Western Trail Argentina, players play the role of cattle ranchers or estancieros, driving their cattle from the ranches in Argentina through the landscape and to the port capital of Buenos Aires, where they can be shipped off to faraway European cities. Players will spend the game upgrading the route by building buildings and helping farmers, hiring employees, building their railways, and various other actions, all in the aim of gaining victory points. There are many ways to gain points, and we'll see these through the video. But in general, anywhere you see an orange shield with a number represents victory points on offer. The timing of the game is tracked by this marker, which moves down the board as players make deliveries to Buenos Aires, and when it drops off the board, the end of the game is triggered. I won't take you step by step through setup, but I'll introduce you to some of the key components and concepts. Each player begins with a deck of 15 cards representing cattle. There'll be 5 grey ones, 3 white twos, 3 black twos, 3 green twos, and a zero representing cattle exhaustion. These are all shuffled together into a deck, and you'll draw a starting hand which depends on your position in turn order. Each player has 10 numbered building tiles which they may be able to construct through the game. Each of these is double sided with an A side and a B side, and you can choose randomly which side to use among all players, but all players must use the same 10 sides. Your player board has four tracks where you'll place the employees that you hire, and you begin the game with one pre-printed employee of each type. Along the right of the board is a place for tracking your beef certificates, which increase the quality of your cattle. Down the bottom is your grain inventory, you can hold at most 8 grain at once. Along the top is the round sequence, and along the left are your auxiliary actions, a series of small and general actions you'll be able to take through the game. All over these tracks there are a number of spaces which are blocked out by these discs, and you'll be clearing these discs, thereby upgrading your board as you go through the game. You'll also have some starting money which depends on your place in turn order, an exchange token, one Estanciero Meeple, and an engine which starts on the zero space of the main board's railway track. You're now ready to play. Great Western Trail is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. Each turn is resolved in three steps, shown at the top of your player board. A, which is movement, B, which is actions, and C, which is refilling your hand. In the movement phase of your very first turn only, discard cards from your hand until you're holding only as many as your hand limit, then place your Estanciero onto any neutral building space on the board. On all subsequent turns, move your Estanciero forwards along the trail, a minimum of one space and a maximum of what's shown on your player board. Your basic amount of movement depends on your player count, and with upgrades you may increase your maximum through the game. With each step of movement, you may move to the next tile, whether it be a small farmer tile or a large building tile, along the dotted path in the direction of the arrows. Spaces with no tiles are not counted, so this movement here would count as 1, 2, 3, 4. You'll reach many forks in the road, and you can choose either direction along the fork, here going one step here, or going one step to here. Players may freely move through or into spaces with other players' estancieros. All farmers and some building tiles show a hand symbol, either in black or green, and this represents a cost that you'll have to pay to move into or through the tile. The cost is shown on your player board and differs based on your player count. If the building belongs to another player, then pay the money to that player. Here blue would be paying one coin each to red and white. 
If the tile is a farmer space, then you'll pay the money to its coin slot. And any money placed in these will accumulate through the game until it's taken. If you have no money when you move into a space with a hand, then you may simply continue to move through without further penalty. And as good as this may sound, you will quickly find that having no money really limits your other options on the board. Next is phase B, where you'll take actions at the tile where you finished your movement. On the vast majority of turns, you'll finish at a building of your colour or a neutral building. And in each case, you can take any or all of the actions printed at the bottom of that tile once each in any order. If there's a risk action printed next to the building, and these will be on fork routes which might fill up with expensive farmers through the game, then you may also take this action as if it were printed on the tile. If you land it on a farmer tile, then you may help that farmer. A specific action which is also available on some of the buildings. And if you land on a building owned by another player, then you have only one option, to take a single auxiliary action. That is, any single small action among those that you've previously unlocked on the left of your player board. Although it won't be very common to do so, you can take a single auxiliary action instead of any other actions at one of the other building types. Finally, if in movement you moved your Estanciero off the end of the track, then you'll go to Buenos Aires and resolve the six steps of a cattle delivery before returning to the start of the trail. Step C is to refill your hand with cattle cards. There are various actions through the round which will force you to discard these cards and they go into a personal discard pile. You'll now refill from your personal deck to your hand limit which starts at 4 and can be increased through the game. If your deck is empty when you go to draw a card, then shuffle your discard pile and it becomes your new deck. A lot of your points and money will come through making effective deliveries through Buenos Aires. So next we'll talk about the six steps of making a delivery. Step one is to optionally make one extra delivery. That is to take a delivery disc which you've previously shipped off to one of the European ports and deliver it into that city for more bonuses. You can't do this unless you have at least one disc in one of these five key spaces on the ports. And while each player begins with one disc in La Havre 1, others won't come until a little bit later in the game. To make an extra delivery, choose a disc, choose an empty space on that disc's port board, pay an amount of grain based on that quarter's cost, and then move your disc to that space claiming any benefit you cover and unlocking these victory points at the end of the game. Once a space is filled, no other disc may be moved there. Discs from the number 2 key have a discount in grain. For example, moving this to here would cost 1 grain instead of 3. For step 2, we're back in Buenos Aires and you'll be selling your hand of cattle cards for money. Reveal your hand of cattle cards and then determine its breeding value by adding up the values on the cards, excluding any duplicates. Here we have two white twos, a black two, and a grey one. Since this is a duplicate, the breeding value of this hand is five. However, if this had been a green two instead, the breeding value would be seven. Next, if you've collected beef certificates, then you may optionally spend one or more of them to increase the breeding value. So let's say here, I spent one beef certificate to increase the value from 7 to 8. Now gain money equal to your breeding value and discard your entire hand. If you have an exhaustion card in your hand, it adds zero to your breeding value, but instead of discarding it, you get to trash it from your hand altogether returning it to its supply. This applies only when you discard it in phase two, not if you discarded it at any other time. Trashing exhaustion both gets them out of your deck and removes these negative two points from your final score. The third phase is to load that same cattle delivery onto one of the ships. 
choose a face-up ship whose number is equal or lower than the breeding value of the delivery you just made. You can choose a ship which has other players' discs already on it, but can't choose a ship which has your own disc, with the exception of ships 0 and 18. These can each have any number of each player's discs. Now choose a disc from your player board to move onto your chosen ship. This begins to upgrade your other actions. If you're moving to a ship which has white corners around its disc space, then you may only choose one of your weaker white boarded upgrades. If the ship has black corners, then you can choose either a white or black boarded disc. If there are multiple discs in the same box, you don't have to go from left to right. You can choose to upgrade in any order. If there's an additional bonus or cost shown above a disc, then you either gain or must spend it immediately when moving the disc. It's helpful to remember that a red number in Great Western Trail is always bad. That is, it is always a cost to the player. If you chose the zero ship, you immediately gain two pesos. And choosing a ship with this icon grants you an objective card, which we'll talk about later. Finally, pay that ship's grain cost. Here it's one. If you find yourself unable to pay the full grain cost, then you must make up the difference at a cost of two coins per grain. You'll always have enough money to do this from your income in phase two. You cannot choose to pay money in place of grain if you have enough grain. And be aware, you can never substitute coins for money when doing an extra delivery in step one. With steps four, five, and six, you'll re-see the board with new tiles. In step four, choose one of the farmers or granjeros from the left column. This will be orange, purple, or green. Place it into the lowest numbered open space on its colored track. In step five, you'll add an employee to the labor market. You'll be adding these from left to right, top to bottom, displacing this marker when you reach the end of the row and starting from your play accounts position when you go to a new row. Finally, in step six, you'll choose one of the right hand tiles, either another employee treated in the same way or a yellow granjero, which fills the lowest numbered space of its longer track at the top of the board. If when you add an employee, you move the game tracker past one of these icons, resolve its effect. In the case of a colored anchor, the three ships with that color of anchor background now set sail for Europe. Upon arrival, you'll move the discs from those ships to the matching key spaces shown by the color and number of the anchor itself. So here you would go to brown one, that is La Arf one, these ones will go to La Arf 2, and this one to Rotterdam 1. These discs are now available for you to take the extra delivery action on subsequent visits to Buenos Aires. Discard those ships from the game, then draw two new ships from the draw deck and add them to their positions in the queue. The new ships never sail, but discs on them are worth victory points. To finish your turn, refill the four site area from the A, B, and C bags. Return your Estanciero to the start of the track and redraw in step C as normal. Now we'll talk about the different actions that you'll find on the buildings along your path. Often you'll find places to sell some cattle and this can be a good way to cycle through your deck and get a little bit of extra money. Here you discard a black two from your hand to gain two pesos, and here you'll discard two matching cattle cards for two pesos. Here you would have to discard an objective card to move your certificate cube down three steps. At some buildings you can take a single or double auxiliary action, and remember that taking a single auxiliary action is always an alternative to whatever's printed on a building. For a single auxiliary action, Choose one of your six actions which has at least one one times visible and resolve it once. For a double auxiliary action, choose one of the actions which has both times ones visible and resolve it twice. You cannot use a double auxiliary action to take two different single auxiliary actions, but you can use it to take a single auxiliary action with only one disc unlocked. 
These are generally exchanges of your basic resources. Here you're simply gaining one or two coins. Here you're spending grain to gain a beef certificate and a coin. Here you're buying grain for a coin. And here you're spending a coin to move your railway engine one step. More on that later. This one lets you draw a card into your hand and then discard one. And the double version is to draw both cards first, look at them and then discard two of your choice. You can also spend this exchange token at any time to have the same effect, whether you've unlocked the action or not. It's an important action. You can't just discard cards when you want to. You need specific effects to do so. And this is one of the ones which gives you that flexibility. The final action is to move your engine backwards one space in order to draw one card and then remove one card from your hand from the game entirely. And the double version of this action is to draw two cards, then remove two. This action is a good way to thin out the low value starting cards from your deck. This action lets you hire a worker. Choose any worker currently on this board, excluding any in the same line as the round tracker. Pay that worker's cost. This will equal to the cost on the right hand side of its row, plus one if it has a strength icon in its lower left corner, and modified by any discount or premium on the action you took. Remember, green is good and red is bad. This worker would cost eight at this action, 10 at this one, and four here. Add the worker from left to right into its matching row of your player board. If you cover an action or bonus, you may optionally take it immediately. You can hire three types of worker from this action. The gauchos, who help to improve your cattle, Carpinteros, who construct buildings, and Machinistas, who help to move your railway engine. The fourth employee, the Granjeros, are not hired through this action. They're hired in a different way, which we'll cover shortly. With this action, or with these two bonus actions on your Carpintero board, you may construct or upgrade a building tile. To construct, Choose any one tile whose required number of Carpinteros is equal or less than the number in your employ. Pay the action's printed cost to each Carpintero involved in the construction. So here two by two Carpinteros for a cost of four. Now place the building tile into a vacant space anywhere on the map. You've made a new building action available to yourself. You've made the path longer and possibly more expensive for other players. And if you've built on the Grand Harrow's path, you've also got access to its risk action. To upgrade a building, choose one of your existing buildings, remove it from the game entirely, and replace it with the new one you wish to build. You must have in your employ, and pay according to the action, the number of Carpinteros equal to the difference between the two buildings costs. With these actions, you can help the Granjeros, that is, help them to run their farms and remove their tokens from the board. With these building actions, you could help between one and three Granjeros anywhere on the board. You can also help a Granjero by landing on it, but in that case, you can only help the specific one you landed on. Each Granjero has a certain amount of strength needed to assist. Here, for example, four, seven, and seven. If I were helping all three of these, I'd need a total of 18. Basic strength is gained by counting up any bonus strength on the building, if any. Here it's three. Any strength you've unlocked on your player board. Here it's two. And strength icons on your employees. Here another three for a total of eight. You can then gain further strength for this action by exhausting cattle cards from your hand, discarding them to gain the strength value in the bottom corners. Here from my basic strength of eight, I could discard these three cattle cards to gain an additional 10 strength, giving me the 18 I need. If you exhaust one or two cattle, you gain one exhaustion card to your discard pile. And if you exhaust three or four cattle, then you gain two. You may not exhaust more than four cattle. For each helped Granjero, take its token, its amount of money, and any money currently on its coin space. 
This can be a good way to gain money while on your journey. For each Grand Hero, you must now make a permanent choice. You can either keep that Grand Hero in your collection, where it will be worth two points and may possibly contribute to objective cards. Or you may hire it. Pay the hiring cost shown on your next hiring space, flip the Grand Hero over so that it no longer has a colour, and then place it on the space gaining the bonus. In this case it's a grain. Later in the game you'll then be able to use this action which gives you one grain for each of your hired Gran Heros, or this one which gives you a coin. The bull's head represents the cattle market and when you take this action you can purchase new and improved cattle using any gauchos in your employ. You can treat each of your gauchos as an action point and each purchase requires one or more of those action points. For example, with one you could purchase a Karaku for 4 pesos. With one you could purchase a Franquiero for 11 pesos, discounted to 6 with 3 gauchos, and discounted to 2 Franqueros for 9 with 5 gauchos. Purchased cattle are not immediately replenished and are added to your discard pile upon purchase. As part of your cattle market action, you can spend one of your gauchos to draw two new cards into the market. And when the game tracker passes either of these cattle market icons, refill to starting capacity based on your player count. Upgraded cattle are worth straight victory points and have higher strengths and breeding values, and you'll need them if you want to make deliveries to the higher numbered ships. There are many ways to move your railway engine, the most efficient of which is this action, which lets you move one space for each of your employed machinistas. When moving, if you enter a space with another engine, treat it as if it isn't there, so two movement here would be one, two. When you move through a switch, you have two options. Either continue your movement forward and move your full distance, or enter the station, where you may choose to stop, foregoing any further movement. You may now upgrade the station, paying the cost shown on the left, and moving a disc from your player board to the station. Like ships, stations can be white-boarded or black-boarded, and the same disc choice rules apply. Also like the ships, multiple players may put discs on the same station, but a player cannot upgrade the same station twice. Immediately after upgrading a station, you may now optionally appoint a station master if the station master tile is still present. Remove any one employee tile from your board, leave that employee to run the station, and take the station master tile. You'll now get an immediate or ongoing benefit above the line and an end game victory point objective below the line. As you advance your engine, you'll start to unlock shortcuts for your Estanciero to get the Buenos Aires. Here, the white engine is yet to reach a shortcut, and so the white player needs to go through all of these Granjeros to get to Buenos Aires. Blue has passed the shortcut at space 3, and so Blue could move to Buenos Aires from this location, bypassing one Granjero. Red has reached space 9 and can move straight from here to Buenos Aires. At its most extreme, this shortcut cuts off the entire top part of the board. When you reach the last step, you may upgrade the station there. Then, whether you do or not, return your train to this depot space. You can keep running this last length of track, and like the number 18 ship, you can upgrade this special station multiple times. This action allows you to move your Estanciero again. Finish taking the actions on this tile, and then, following the normal rules in Phase A, move up to this many spaces forward. You now get to resolve the actions in your destination as well. You can even do another extra movement action and repeat the process again, and you can do a very long chain of actions if you get your buildings in the right places. With this action, you can return an exhaustion from your hand to the supply. With this, you can force everyone else to gain an exhaustion. These two actions combo with your farmland buildings. That is, each of your buildings on a space showing this icon, which will also show a wheat field illustration behind it. 
This grants you a certificate for each pair of coloured side Granjeros you've collected. This lets you make an extra delivery on one of the European port boards, that is, following the sequence of steps from number one in Buenos Aires without doing any of the other steps. You must have a valid disc and pay the grain cost in the usual way. Finally, these actions and these bonuses on your Granjero track let you move a disc straight from your player board to the matching European key space, bypassing the need to ship it there entirely. Like other disc spaces, these may have white borders or black borders, and your choice of disc from your player board must reflect it. From many effects in the game, you will draw an objective card. And when you do this, choose any one of the four face-up objective cards from the display, replenishing it from the deck, and put it in your discard pile. Each objective card has four elements. An action, the requirements of the objective, a number of positive points, and a number of negative points. When you get an objective card into your hand, it serves no value from a cattle breeding standpoint, and if you want to discard it, you'll have to find a specific ability which lets you discard it. Your other option is that you can play the card for its action. Here you'd gain one grain. This stays face up for the rest of the game, but it now activates the risk of losing the negative points if you fail to meet the objective. If you simply kept the card in your hand and cycling through your deck, you would still have the chance to score the positive points, but you would not risk losing the negative. The objectives require you to gather or achieve certain things through the game to unlock the points. For example, purchasing certain types of upgraded cattle, gathering certain colours of granjeros, without converting them to employees, upgrading stations, making deliveries to the 18 ship, constructing private buildings, or making an extra delivery to a specific quadrant. Here, for example, having moved a disc to any port board's eastern quadrant. The end of the game is triggered when this marker is pushed off the edge of the board as part of someone's delivery to Buenos Aires. Whoever triggers this gains this two-point token, and all other players take one more turn. Now count up your final scores. Every five leftover money is worth one point. Each of your buildings on the board is worth the points in its top right corner. Discs on ship tiles are worth the positive or negative points on those tiles. Discs on the port boards score points based on what's printed next to their spaces, and this includes points on the key spaces. Score points for each station you've upgraded. Score two points for each Granjero that you've collected but not hired. And go through your deck hand and discard pile to find all cattle cards and exhaustion cards with a victory point value on them, scoring or losing all printed points. At this point, you'll score your objectives. You'll have a row of objective cards that you played for their actions during the game, and go through your deck to find any other objective cards you still have. You'll now work out which ones you've completed, and you'll do this by assigning discs, buildings, and so on from the board or your supply to the cards. Here, I bring back the discs which match these stations and the port. Could assign these cattle and this granjero to this one, and this cattle and these two buildings to this one. Any items you've gained within the game can only be applied to a single objective. Gain the positive points for each objective you've completed, and lose the negative points only for objectives that you played for their actions but failed to complete. If you've appointed Station Masters, score points for each time you've met the objective. Here it's four points for each set of one of each employee, for a total of eight. Score Player Board points, which will be four points for each employee in the fifth or sixth columns, and two points if you've cleared this disc. And finally, gain two points if you were the one who triggered the end. The player or players with the highest score wins. And that's how to play Great Western Trail Argentina. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please help us. Hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell. I'm also on Instagram. Find me there.
Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.